Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of Stadia Pladia. Today we are reviewing Pixel Junk Raider, so let's start this up! So I'm just going to say it right now, I'm a huge fan of Pixel Junk Raiders. I've been playing it since day one, I have over 180 hours of playtime on it, and I have a few tricks up my sleeve to breeze through some of the hardest level. But today this is not about me, today is about showing you the pros and cons of the game and to see if this game is recommended for you. So the game starts with an intro that set up the theme of the game. The story is quite simple. Planet Tuntal is being invaded by another alien race and you are a rookie mercenary that was hired to rescue as much Tantalian as possible. You stay on your ship, orbiting the planet, and you send avatars that you control from your desk while being mentored by Mark the Merc. Your first mission starts with the only pre-assigned map that is made to get you familiar with the controls. You get a brief tutorial with Mark the Merc mentioning a few useful tips for the controls and then you are left to complete your one and only task. Rescue all survivors. So now let's jump into the gameplay and let me tell you, this game is hard. I'm not going to lie to you, it took me around 10 hours to start to fully appreciate the game. Before that, I had a few moments where I debated if I actually wanted to continue the game or not. But I pushed through and it was very rewarding. You start the game by quote unquote login in your computer uh, that automatically generate missions for you. You get to choose which mission you want to try out with level 1 to 10 missions, 1 being the easiest and 10 being the hardest. By completing these missions, you build up a percent amount and as soon as you reach 100%, you can enter a boss fight that helps you progress through the story. So yes, you can actually finish this game. As I mentioned before, your main objective in every mission is to save all Tentalians on the map. Some might find this repetitive, but there are over 8 million different maps that can be generated. So every time you're dropped into a mission, it always feels like a breath of fresh air. There are different types of environments in the map. You'll mostly find citadels, but there's also forests, undergrounds, and towers. Saving the survivors should be easy, but if there are enemy aliens around, they won't allow you to save them until you've rid of all of them. Combat in this game is very hard at first, but after you've mastered the way of the sword, it simply becomes very fun. During their attacks, you can dodge, use a shield, or even parry, which is very hard to do. You have different types of weapons such as swords, daggers, and hammers. They are all useful in their own way. You have different types of attacks such as combos, spin, and dash attacks. And if you're in a sticky situation, you can use imprints to summon very useful gadgets that might save your life, such as mines, turrets, and friendly aliens that will fight along with you. Your avatar has a stamina bar called SP, which is very similar to games such as Dark Souls. Every time you attack, your SP will go down. If it's at zero, you can still attack, but you will be unable to dodge and you will move very slowly, and this brings you to a very big disadvantage in combat. After you finish a mission, you are moved to a screen that gives you experience for the amount of things you've accomplished in this mission, like saving the survivors, destroying aliens, and picking up items. When you level up, you are allowed to put one patch on your avatar that will improve it in some kind of way. You can improve your HP, attack, or even add a new skill to your avatar. You are then directed to your bonus contract screen. For a specific amount of survivor save, you get to unlock something for your avatar like costumes, weapons, and DNAs. Uh, DNAs are another thing that you can equip to your avatar for perks, like getting a 5 second invincibility before dying, uh, immunity to poison or increased critical hit rate, so on and so forth. The state share is a very cool feature of the game where you can take a screenshot when you're in a mission, send it to another player, and then they can play the mission that you were just in. What's nice about it is that any weapon that you dropped on the map and any imprints that you use gets dropped inside the state share for the player to use and it's very useful if someone needs help in finishing a hard mission. The music is good, it's not something that I listen to every day, but it's very calm and fits the atmosphere of the game. What's cool about it is that the song blends into another song depending on where you are on the map. For example, if there's no enemies around, the music is very calm, but then if the music changed and is more aggressive, you know that there's going to be enemies around. Uh, it, it also changed uh, if you're in an underground or in a keeper cemetery. Alright, let's jump into the ugly part of the review. <laughs> the thing that, in my opinion, would need some improvement. Uh, I'll just point out the biggest flaw. 
But of course there's some little things here and there that would also need some improvement. One word, the progression. I feel like either you're not leveling up fast enough, or you're just not getting strong enough for the missions that you're getting thrown into. I can tell you without a doubt that everyone who played the game got thrown into a mission that was too high of a difficulty for them to complete. You are going to get beat up <laughs> aggressively, I can tell you that. And this is just a break point where either you persist and continue until you get powerful enough uh, or just give up and end up not liking the game, you know? The state shares are kind of the saving grace for this issue because if you can't complete your missions uh, in your list and you're stuck, then you can jump into a spreadsheet list that we've made to help out uh, and you can select any missions in order of difficulty. This is it guys! This is all I had to say for my review of Pixel Junk Raiders. Of course, there's a lot more I could talk about, but these are the main points that I personally wanted to share with you guys. In conclusion, the game has great potential if you're willing to stick with it for the first 10 hours. But if you can't, then maybe the game is just not for you and I can guarantee you that you're going to find flaws of things that are actually non-existent. You really need to put some hours in it if you want the full experience. Thanks again and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you enjoy the content. This will help me a lot uh, for adding more things to this channel and have a good one!